Hey there, party people. It is Alda Wibs, and it is day six of Con Spoilers. Is we're just still putting out the good stuff? Meh. Going in games. All right, well, today we're going to try and push past all the crap so we can just splurge on the good stuff. So without further ado, this thing. I blame Ken Nagel. Meandering Tower Shell is something I'd usually love. It's green, it's got a huge ass, and after all, Shrek is in fact both love and life. Why does it exile itself? The flavor here is, oh, I'm a big slow turtle. So why then does it have the ability to transport itself through time and space in the blink of an eye? Can you imagine how horrifying it would be if you were just battling this giant turtle and it just up and disappeared? Only to arrive 10 minutes later like, oh, come on, man, you want to go? Meandering Tower Shell, you drunk. Remember when cards like Rosh Remember when cards like Rosh Hashanah? Remember when cards like Five Consonants and A's Death Dealer used to be good? Pepperidge Farms remembers. This love child of Putrid Leech and Lotleth Troll has quite the pedigree, but is most likely just the lesser son of greater sires. Putrid Leech pumped off of life, which allowed you to further your board presence while beating in. Lotleth Troll at least had Trample, and the pump was permanent. This guy just kinda sits there dirtling, sucking up all your mana while getting chump blocked in the process. <laughs> Sure, it's a fine card for limited, but this is not the cat demon we were hoping for. Trail of Mystery is a big fat WTF. Why was putting the lands in the play tapped too powerful here? Does Wizards actually think they printed enough morph this time around to make that insane? I mean, the pump is fine or whatever, but the real takeaway from here is that there's likely non-morph creatures since Wizards took the time to put the word permanence on this. So at a cavern, here we come. Just stop making phoenixes, okay? This card wouldn't be good at rare. Why is it a mythic? Ashcloud Phoenix has the single most interesting return ability for a Phoenix yet. I mean, they really had a shot with this one. But where's the haste? How do you print a 4-1 mythic bird that's made of fire without haste? I just, I gotta move on. Thank Jeebus there is another mythic spoiled. And not only is it playable, it's the goddamn Loch Ness Monster. Pearl Lake Ancient is a big dumb mythic done right. Flash, check. Can't be countered? Check. Force new mechanic on a creature with absolutely no evasion? Check. He even has the ability to protect himself for the low cost of returning three lands you control to your hand. All in all, it's an insane limited bomb, but probably would see more standard play if it wasn't so damn greedy. This guy costs seven. And we all know the real Loctus monster only costs half that, which is about tree fitting. Modern players got a little to salivate over this morning, and that came in the form of murderous cut. Murder for one black sounds real nice, and if you've ever played Modern, you understand that you get four cards in your graveyard by about turn two most of the time. Having something like this with Delve lets you further your board while still having tricks in your bag, and giving your opponent something else they have to think about is never really a bad thing. Now Siege Rhino is a guy I can get behind. Not that you'd ever want to be standing in front of it. Witches is really pushing the power creep on creatures in this set, and I couldn't be happier. This guy is more than standard playable and downright EDH gold. Now in lieu of giving us Lightning Helix back, Wizards gave us a very interesting spell at the same casting cost that I can only hope will be fondly called Talk to the Hand. Now effects like this are always pretty cool, but sadly almost never get played. At two costs though, this has real sideboard potential. I guess we'll just have to see how many big Hulk smashy kind of creatures end up getting played. But the big story of the day was the reveal of three more charms, Mardu, Jeskai, and Teemer. We'll start off with Mardu Charm, and it's becoming very apparent that Wizards knows how to make charms these days. We get our choice of Instant Speed Flame Slash, Raise the Alarm plus an additional First Strike ability, and Instant Speed Duress until end of turn. All of these modes are relevant, from killing Choristers to blocking down for value to the endless draw step shenanigans that are now sure to be part of next standard. Jazz Sky Charm is equally as powerful, but I gotta admit this one seems a little phoned in. Sure, I love Azorius and Boros Charms as much as the next guy, but clearly not as much as Wizards R&D. Still, having the most used mode of Boros Charm fused with two strictly better modes of Azorius Charm is way too good not to find a home somewhere. But Teemer were without a doubt my favorite clan coming in, and they have cemented that firmly with their charm. We get pseudo Satezen tactics, the ability to slip past creatures with power 3 or less, and freaking Mana Leak! Sure, Banana Charm over here is probably still the best one, but Mana Leak? On a charm? Oh, I'm in love! The last big piece of news is 10 new Refuge lands. That's awesome! Granted, they couldn't call them Refuges this time, because I guess that was too Zendikar flavored, so they just kind of have a whole bunch of random names, but hey, they're better than Guild Games. At common, these lands are huge for this set, making the nightmare of heavily three-colored sealed actually possible. I'm really looking forward to this limited environment, and I gotta thank you, Wizards, for making this a little easier on all of us. Week 2 of spoilers is now thrust upon us, and I gotta admit the clans are really taking shape. Teemer is the clan my heart belongs to, but who are your favorites? 
Leave us some comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. But until next time, peeps, Wibs out. Jesus. Oh, I hope tomorrow has less jank.